but Rick, you've got how old's your youngest now? Seven and a half, Bella. So you've got you've got children all through that range. There are parents who don't have the ability to put their kids into private school because they can't afford it. They can't send their kids to religious school, and there aren't uh, either subsidies or there are no opportunity scholarships. And these kids are being stuck in schools. They're being trapped in schools that don't give them the opportunity to succeed. I'm not asking for the role of Washington, but who's going to fight for those kids? I want to go back to, uh, to what Marco just said because the numbers, your, your stats pack them up. Uh, there was just a survey done of marriage rates in states and economic success. And it turns out that the states that have the highest marriage rates have the best economies. It also turns out to correlate the states that have the highest marriage rates have the best schools. And what Mark was saying is absolutely right. You talk to any parent, any teacher, or any administrator, anybody in the school system, and you ask them the biggest problem, it's not common core and curriculum, it's not computers and labs, it's the fact that many children are coming into the school system not willing, able, or prepared to learn and not having supportive families to, to help the schools. The breakdown of the family is breaking everything down. It's breaking our economy down, it's breaking our schools down, it's breaking our culture down. And unfortunately, we don't have any leaders in this country, or very darn few of them, who are willing to stand up and be politically incorrect and stand up and fight for the institutions and the traditions that are important for these children to have a better life. I encourage you to read a book. I don't often cite liberal Harvard professors, but Robert Putnam's book, Our Kids, read it. Read the first few chapters, at least, that describe growing up in Port Huron, Ohio, when he was a kid in the 1950s, and then growing up today, and what it was like to grow up poor in 1950. And yet all of those kids, almost every one of them did well. Why? Because they came from stable families, or at least neighborhoods where there were dads. And today, there are no dads. There are no stable families. And look at the lives of the children that we say, it's just okay. We can't talk about this because we don't want to pass any moral judgments down. We're so afraid to offend anybody, we won't fight for the lives of our children. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a president who's willing to go up and challenge the American public to rebuild a culture of marriage and family in America. If you want to fix education, you can abolish all the education departments you want. But you have to do something about the child entering into that school. You want to help teachers, help parents, stabilize the family so children can come to school prepared to learn. And then give the power. I always say, you know, who's the customer of the education system? People always say, oh, the kids. No, the parents. Why? Because it's the parents' responsibility to educate the children. And as a result, parents, if parents have the responsibility, they should be given the power. They should be given the power within the public schools or whatever other schools they have to be able to give every child what the parent believes is the best education possible for that child. That's my mission statement as President of the United States.